Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hall Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2009 Honda Civic Hybrid in the shop. Another auction car. These are interesting case studies. Um, and this one, a customer complaint is it always pulls to the left, as in the electric power steering assist is always trying to turn the steering wheel to the left. It's the craziest thing. So you're driving on the road, the car wants to go left, and you have to fight it to keep it straight. Not a safe situation. Uh, so let's see if we can you know see what the root cause of the problem is uh, this thing doesn't look smashed or beat up but who knows did a full code scan and there's nothing really uh, you know electronic power steering system has no codes in it if you start the car up you see the steering wheel turned right away and turning it left is like super easy Turning it right, you have to fight it. And then it always like, it wants to go left. No, no trouble codes. Very interesting. So let's jump right into the EPS. I bet that the issue is gonna be with the torque angle sensor on this car. So no DTCs, let's just, um, Look at the live data. Does it think you're trying to turn the steering wheel? Okay. So I'll just read fault code just in case. No trouble code. Data stream. Just select all the data PIDs. See what this thing Okay, so average current, charge pump voltage, current sensor, engine speed, motor angle. So let's spin the wheel. All the way to the left. There's motor RPM, motor voltage, offset angle. Motor current, it's always high. It's like 13 amps, even though right now we don't need any assist. I'm looking for uh, a torque data PID. There we go, 2.2 foot pounds. So, I turn the steering wheel to the left so that value doesn't change if if I fight it it will be a positive value but if I let it go it always settles at minus 2.2 okay so let's turn the steering wheel back to its a neutral position here so I don't like that number if we turn the car off and just have the key on not touching the steering wheel we're still at minus 2.3 foot-pounds. Now if we torque the steering wheel, I guess we should back out of here. Read data stream. Okay, it's responding. So I have to torque the steering wheel to the right significantly to get that torque reading to zero. If I let it go, we're at 2.2 foot-pounds. And it does go, so let's see, negative minus 6.8, that's the lowest it can read. And then to the right, 4.6, and it goes to four volts. Okay. So, I'm wondering if it needs a new sensor or if we can relearn this, uh, this value. Let's jump into special functions, see what we have. Okay, here we go. Torque sensor learn, EPS steering angle sensor value clear, MA EPS control. Let's, let's just try it. 
Torque sensor neutral position after operation as follows. Replacement gearbox, replacement of torque sensor, replacement of EPS VGA control unit, replacement of the gear ratio sensor. Okay. Jack up the front of the vehicle, support with stands, the wheels rotate freely, place the front wheels in a straight head position, turn the steering wheel by 10 degrees to the left and the right, turn the steering wheel to the straight ahead position. Alright, so both wheels are off the ground. You just have a floor jack in its central spot there. Let's try the procedure again. Okay. So 10 degrees to the left, 10 degrees to the right, and straight ahead. Okay. Learn failed. Turn the ignition off. So I wonder why that is. So it's interesting to see this uh, torque calibrated value. So it's subtracting one foot pounds. But we're still at one minus 1.5 now. So that procedure did do something. But we're still too far off. It might not be able to compensate for such a big discrepancy. So two and a half foot pounds might be too much. I think you can only calibrate within plus or minus one foot pound. So in this case, we need to go after this torque sensor and see, you know, what the deal is there. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to go from zero to four volts, so I assume two volts would be zero. It's showing 1.6, and it should show about two volts at zero foot pounds. So why is it showing 1 point, you know, 1.7 volts? We need to find a wiring diagram and measure the actual signal of this torque sensor. It could be that there's a poor connection and the signal voltage is dropping before it gets to whatever the steering module and then uh, it's not reading the correct torque. That's a very plausible scenario, so you got to locate the sensor. Also, I started the vehicle, and now it's not fighting me as hard because we calibrated, you know, we took one foot pound away from the reading, so now it's only, only thinks that I'm, you know, turning the steering wheel of one foot pound instead of two and a half. That's pretty neat, so now it's a lot easier to turn it to the right but it's still not quite correct. So I think the problem is gonna be a wiring problem or the torque sensor itself, uh, but we have to check the connection. Some interesting background info on this torque sensor. <clears throat> Nerd out a little bit here. When the steering wheel is turned, twist occurs in the torsion bar between the steering side of the input shaft and the output shaft on the road reaction force side. Inductance is changed by the movement of the core. The amount this voltage changes varies with the amount of movement and the direction of the core is amplified with the interface circuitry of the sensor coil and output to the EPS control unit as a steer signal. So there's the graph. Steer to left, steer to right, and center. There's the core, there's the coil. Very cool. And it says it's supposed to be centered at 2.5 but we, we know it's 2 volts based on scan data and this torque sensor lives right where the input shaft comes into our steering rack apparently so let's uh, let's try to find it because the wiring diagram says it's the right side of engine compartment so I'm not exactly sure so I did a little more research on this torque sensor and you know, we can see from the wiring diagram it's a four wire sensor. It lives right on where the steering shaft enters the steering rack. So VS1, PVF, VS2 and ground. Now we have these two voltage data pids in the list ADV1 and ADV2 and I'm not sure what they mean, 
But in the Think Tool Pros, you can hit, uh, click Help, and this, this is actually very helpful. It says VT1 voltage indicates the voltage which is calculated from VS1 voltage. Turning wheel to the right, the voltage will be increased. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So if we turn the wheel to the right, the voltage does increase, and I let the wheel go. It sells about 2.2 volts. Now ADV2, <clears throat> let's turn to the right again. That decreases, see 2.4, back to 2.56. Now let's turn the wheel to the left. ADV1 decreases to 2 volts, and ADV2 goes up to 2.8. Okay, and back to neutral. So, those voltages, I think, are these two right here, VS1 and VS2, and that is what the flow chart, or the uh, description and operation here, this is what uh, this little chart is all about. 2.5 volts should be in the middle when you're not torquing the steering wheel. And it has uh, two sensors, one, they're kind of inverse, but they should both be at 2.5 volts when you're not steering to the left or to the right. So what do we see here? ADV2 is about, you know, 2.5, it's like 2.56. ADV1, however, is low, 2.18. So about 0 0.3 volts too low. Now, that is exactly... This wire, VS1, that's a pink wire coming from our torque sensor. So where could the problem be? It could either be a faulty sensor, it could be some corrosion on the connector right at the sensor, or it could be corrosion at this intermediate co uh, connector and we don't know what the number is, we, we uh, have to look at the OEM uh, wiring diagram to see where that connector lives. And whatever is easier to check. If the voltage is 2.5 coming out and then drops to like 2.3 or you know 2.2 across the connector, we'll know that the problem is at, at that connector exactly. So a few variables here, but we're just based on scan data and learning about these data PIDs, we can narrow the problem down pretty well. We know exactly where to go and what to check. So let's find the connector location and uh, the sensor itself. It's kind of hard to get to the connector. I can see it from up top. It's just buried in there. Uh, and do some voltage measurements. So what about this torque sensor voltage data PID? That is a calculated value based on the two uh, readings up top. And if you read the description here in uh, the Think Tool Pros, it'll uh, basically say what is written uh, by Honda on all data. So pretty cool. You do have some information in the scanner that will help you make sense of... <clears throat> these data PIDs, but let's uh, let's do some voltage measurements on these torque sensors. So all data, shout out to all data, amazing information. Here's our torque sensor, this is the OE wiring diagram, and that connector is C213. It even shows you photo 155, view 150. If we search for connector C213, says under right side of engine compartment so <clears throat> I assume this is a left hand drive vehicle so it'll be under the left side but there's our C213 4 pin connector white should be right next to the EPS gearbox motor angle sensor everything's in one spot there um, there's the axle shaft looks like a support bearing there so we can go right to there <clears throat> or 
There's our torque angle sensor, very nice photo, EPS torque sensor 3, uh, 3 pin gray. Now, you can see that this is a 3 pin connector there, and then this is T102, this, that's just the ground. Right there, T102, so <clears throat> that's like a little ground strap, I guess, and it goes into that wiring harness. So we can do voltage checks here, right at the torque angle sensor or at the intermediate connector. Well, under the hood here, it looks a little corroded, and uh, I can actually see the connector for the torque sensor. If you come in here, there it is. You can see the pink wires, pink, blue, white, three wire sensor. So I think I'll remove the air box so I can actually get in there and back probe the pink wire. We'll measure the voltage with the key on. All right, so with the key on, we're graphing some data. So pay attention to the first data pid there, ADV voltage one, 2.18 volts. So if I'm gonna wiggle the connector and see if that voltage changes at all. And it does not. So now let's install a voltmeter and back probe the pink wire. So <laughs> maybe this isn't as simple as a regular analog voltage here. Let's see. Let's just go in order. Pink wire. four point five volts steady okay that's now what we expected middle wire four point four two volts again not what we expected we can check our meter just touch the battery eleven point seven six yeah that's reasonable And the third wire, four point four nine. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Hmm. I'm going to unplug this sensor. We went to 3.6 and 3.6 on both wires. Torque sensor goes to 2.56 and torque goes to 1.15. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Not really. Let me plug this sucker back in. Look at the pins. Pins look fine. Everything looks clean. Plug it back in. 2.18, 2.56. So, are those not real voltages? They might be converted from, you know, let's, let's put the voltmeter on one of those wires, on the pink wire, and turn the steering wheel and see if that voltage changes. I don't see why it's 4.5 volts. All right, so on the voltmeter, I'm turning the steering wheel, just torquing it left, torquing it right, 4.49 volts, no change whatsoever, but voltage one and voltage two do change. So that doesn't make any sense either. How could that not change at all? What is going on here? Should we put a scope on there? Aha! Uh -huh. The scope <laughs> tells all the whole story here. It's not a constant voltage, but 500 microseconds per division, this signal is super fast. If we ramp up 
the time base, you can see it's somewhere around 4 volts, but our voltmeter is reading 4.5. This is on the pink wire. So that's the signal. And is that known good, known bad? I don't know. I, I assume it's okay. But somehow the uh, power steering control module con converts it to 2.17 volts. So this is not a real voltage. It's converted. Okay? Now, let's plug in channel 2, the red, to the other side of the the other sensor, the second wire. Turn that on and see how different the signal is. So, let's do plus or minus 5 volts or plus or minus 10 volts. It looks identical. So how does the computer know the difference? How does it say 2.17 and 2.57? That doesn't make any sense to me. Hmm. I mean it's literally The exact same voltage. Should we put another channel on the uh, the input, the middle wire? Because blue and red is reference voltage, and then VS1 is sensor input, VS2 is sensor input. So the blue and red should be some kind of reference voltage. I don't know. We could maybe there there's a differential. I have no idea. Okay, did not expect to see this whatsoever. <laughs> so the green is the input. So on her wiring diagram, this PVF reference voltage, and then the blue and the red are the two channels. The two channels look remarkably similar to each other. Now, and our voltages are very different. So my question is, it seems that the sensor is doing what it should. Now, these voltages should change when I turn the steering wheel or torque it to one side or another. Now they kind of do. See the blue and the red separating? How cool is that? So when I turn to the left, and eh, Turn to the right. I'm going to turn it and actually torque it against the stop. Very slight change in voltage. But when it's neutral, I guess those two sensors are just a little bit too far apart. And man, this thing is super sensitive. So they should be exactly aligned. And then you'll get, you know, like 2.3, 2.4. Those voltages should be the same when the two signals are on top of each other. Now, we can drop the plus or minus. like that and then just drag these signals down okay now you can see the um, difference a little better ten microseconds per division so you can see the separation between the blue and the red right there they should have the same voltage and they do exactly the same voltage on the scan data. That's that's nuts. Now I'm turning to the left. You have the large separation. You have 0 0.7 volts separation on the scan data. So vo what's the voltage difference here between those two levels? Where is it getting its 
measurement from. So let's look at the known good sensor, 2.3 to 2.7. And that would be the red channel. So let's move the blue channel out of the way. Or we can just um, turn it off for now. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it to the left, turn it to the right. So to the left is 2.8, to the right is 2.3. And the real voltage if we can measure a um, Let's measure the bottom of this little hump. So 2.5. Now if I go left, it goes a little bit lower, like here. 2.4. And then when I go right, it goes not too much higher like right about there 2.6 so only 0 0.2 volts difference here it is so so sensitive turn on the blue channel <sighs> you would think they're so close, but they're zero point about zero point three volts apart on scan data. And that is about right. So in real data they're about zero point one volts. part. If we measure the gap from like say there to there, delta is 151 millivolts. So 0 0.1 volts. And here it's 0 0.3 volts or 4. Okay so Ideally, these signals should be exactly on top of each other when we're not torquing the steering wheel, and they're not, and we're measuring right at the sensor connector, and we unplug the sensor and plug it back in, nothing changed. So it looks like this thing needs a new steering rack, unfortunately. So it was either going to be no parts required or really expensive and in this case it looks like it's really expensive so it's a fault in the torque sensor itself and the calibration can't account for that because the difference is just too big this thing needs a steering rack that's the diagnosis crazy stuff though I'm gonna save some of these waveforms and uh, maybe put them in the link below to uh, share them with you guys Well, there's a bonus footage here. How much does the steering rack cost? Well, you can get a reman one for oh, about 600 bucks, 300 core, so 900 all together. Or you'll get 300 back once you send your old one in. But it does come with everything, the sensors and 
even says common EPAS failures, torque sensor failure. Sensor gives incorrect input data to the power steering control module, leading to improper assist and diagnostic trouble codes. Yep. It is what it is. Would never have this kind of failure on a regular hydraulic steering rack. And, you know, those racks just get loose or leak or something. And to replace them, it's not that expensive. But the more technology you have, the more expensive the, uh, <laughs> the parts are. Unfortunately, you need a whole new steering rack plus alignment, plus the torque sensor calibration, and uh, this thing should be should be fixed. So, auction cars, always fun. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So, again, very interesting to note that when the two signals are the same, I'm turning the steering wheel to the right, the torque sensor reads exactly 2.5 volts, which is what the spec is. So, that should be neutral. And you see our torque here reads one foot pounds. That's because we did the um, <clears throat> we tried doing the torque sensor calibration and it calibrated it by one foot pounds, but it should be by like two or two point two or so, and it's just out of range. So that, I mean that proves that the sensor is bad. Unfortunately, are there any other variables? Based on these signals, I'm just completely, you know, these voltages are, the difference is so small. What is the computer looking for? Is it looking for some kind of current through the module? Or, that's a tiny, like that tiny difference any little connection problem would would cause that wouldn't it now we're seeing this voltage difference right at the sensor and that's you know based on the changes in the signals when we turn the steering wheel left and right very minute changes in voltage so the fact that they're spread out a little bit in neutral position that's enough to condemn the sensor. Otherwise, <laughs> if they changed a lot and there was a very small difference, then we would be worried about, um, you know, let's measure the voltage at the um, actual controller to see if we're dropping out or losing some voltage, if there's a voltage drop between the sensor and the computer. So EPS control unit right there. And that lives on the right side there under the dash so we could back probe it there just in case to make sure there's no voltage drops and uh, yeah, that's about it okay so I thought about it a little more and we're worried about the blue trace right that's showing too low of a converted voltage on the scanner however on the scope it's showing a little too high of a voltage so, we could still have a connection problem because on this pink wire, let's say at C213, there's a little bit of uh, corrosion here, a little too much resistance, and then, you know, whatever circuitry is in here, it has to be a resistance free connection with such small voltage differences if there's any resistance in this wire uh, you're gonna have an elevated voltage at the sensor right I mean, we can unplug the sensor and see what our scope does Let's go back to 10 and 10. We'll turn off the trigger. So that's that's what we have right now. Let's unplug it and see what the voltages are coming from the controller. So I'm going to reach down here. 
unplug it. So that's our feed and now we're at exactly 5 volts. So that sensor is pulling down the voltages. Is that does that make sense? So we're steady 5 right now from the controller and this is our reference voltage from the controller. Minus two to zero. Again, you want to make sure your ground is good. So if I unhook the ground, yep, our ground is good. If we hook the sensor back up, there we go. What happens now? Ah, so now from 5 volts it actually drops through the sensor and then comes back up. So whenever this pulse goes low, the sensor, whatever it does, starts pulling down the reference voltage from the computer and the blue is not being pulled down enough. That's that's what's going on. So in that case we don't we would not have a high resistance problem. You know, if the voltage is coming in 5 volts and then this sensor is basically pulling it down in those little little humps the blue isn't being pulled down as much as the red well that means and we're worried about the blue um, that just means that the sensor itself is faulty so we don't need to check the actual um, signals uh, at the controller